So I am supposed to give a disclaimer that there is sex and violence. So be warned. There we go. <laughs> Um, this was written at my very first uh, Bart of Venice, and it has some Shakespearean words that kind of never made it into modern society. But, um, yeah. Uh, her life as a child was full of love and wonder. She spent her days happily playing in the creeks outside her home with her best friend during the warmer months, and often the two families would happily convive together in the evening, life was simple and well as a child. Her father, while stern, was loving. He was often away to the villages and towns, far from home to tend to business. When her father returned home, he often spoke of a family from during his travels with which he felt defined. Many times the family would let him lodge at their very fine estate and would treat him as though he were family. They had a grand home with considerable land, but what she loved most was when her father would tell her about the lady of the house, for she had no mother of her own. When she came of a certain age, her father sat, on, sat her down to tell her what he thought to be joyous news. He had promised the family of his stories that she would marry their son and their two families would become one. Instantly, she felt her heart become fractured. She was betrayed. Hayden tears fell upon her face. Her father became angry and enraged at her ungratefulness, gnarling at her. He screamed for her to halt and cease her blubbering, lest he use a rod against her. She dried her eyes, and unsisting, she was wed within the month. The day of her wedding for her was a moment in gray. She floated through the day as though she was outside herself, not a part of the festivities but that of an observer. Over the next years, her husband did not pay her much mind. He went to her monthly like clockwork until she bore him a son. After the year passed of their son's birth, her husband ceased to visit her altogether. She knew he preferred the company of others and was thankful. She did not enjoy his visits or his attention, for he was often cruel to her. She could not abide his touch, his smell, or even his voice. He was considered handsome by many for sure, she, but he repulsed her in every way. One evening, he interrupted her during her private reflection to instruct her they were to hold a celebration event and she would do well to make it most grand or experience his anger like none other. He wanted to show off his longevity and vitality to all those he could reach. He wanted it to be known of his heir. She was to summon all whom she could reach far and wide, regardless of their standing, poor or wealthy. He demanded all to attend. She was to spare no expense, and she planned and she prepared. She sent personal handwritten invitations to those of equal or greater importance. Announcements were hung for those who were common. The days were filled full and tiresome. The day of the event arrives and the guests filter in with excitement. The people merrily dance, converse and laugh. Her husband loudly barges into the room, proudly prancing around, holding up their son with his mistress on his arm as though she were the rightful mother of their son. She feels advised as if she herself is a moment. As guests give the couple praise and blessings for their beautiful air, a few in the crowd turn to her in awkward silence. She gives them quick smiles and deflection so as not to let on of her pain and sorrow at what was just, had just transpired. She wanted to appear as though not bothered. She would rise above. Then, as she looks up, her eyes become fixed on the beauty who enters. She is breathless. Her heart quickens. Her palms become moist. She has never beheld such beauty in her life. She is immediately smitten, lips so rubious, full and beckoning a gentle warm kiss, skin of ivory that longs to be caressed, 
hair so pitch it glistens, and she needily wants to run her fingers through the dark river of seemingly soft strands. At last, the breathtaking beauty glances in her direction, and the most gentle smile crosses her face. The beauty glides to her as if floating on air. She stops and with soft, rubious lips gently kisses her hand, sending waves of sharp pulses deeply throughout her yearning body. The beauty, ever so elegantly, speaks of congratulations to her for her accomplishment of a strong, healthy son. The beauty then asks if they might speak in private. They set off for her private chambers. Upon the door closing, an affair ensues. Passion, as she never felt before, envelops her. Before she realizes, they are gownless and entangled in one another's arms. In all their ecstasy, they never hear her husband enter the chamber. In all his mistempered rage, he slays them as they are. Repeatedly, he stabs them until life has drained from them completely. And as he gazes over at his wife, she lay still, entwined in her new lover's arms, drenched in rubious blood, fracted, and truly smiling.